competition is fun But hooking is the only way We're gonna show you how to catch some fish today So what would Alan do? I don't know, what would I do? <laughs> So anyway, uh, this is a second video of my What Would Ellen Do? So you guys send in your comments and then, you know, I answer them. And we also do it on every last Friday of the month. We do this little video thing for you, explaining, answering your questions. After you watch my videos, I'd appreciate it if you guys would hit the like and subscribe. Subscribing doesn't cost you anything, so just hit subscribe. It'll really help me out. If you watch one of my videos and you're interested you can go down on the bottom click that little arrow and it'll go in the description and then you can see all the products I'm using and if you purchase it there it'll really help my channel out thank you oh, okay Alan so we have questions from some of the comments that came in from Alan Fung Outdoors and Eddie Colley wanted to know can you eat bass yes you can they're, sure. act they're actually a delicacy and basically, I would go on to Fishing California or Fishing Wildlife's website mm -hmm. and look because if your wife is pregnant or something, you can only eat so many pounds a week. My right? wife's pregnant? No, that's impossible. Okay. <laughs> but yours, they have a limit to certain lakes, but some lakes okay. are more, you could say, polluted or whatever. I don't know. Okay. A little but more I, mercury in the, in the yeah, water. Yeah. But I've been eating them all my life, and look, I'm normal. Yeah. Look at his hair and say, and I could even fish. <laughs> I could catch. Okay. So, all right. Yeah, you can. Well, you know, and one of the things you need to do in the future is a video on how to cook bass because you gave us the recipe, the Chinese recipe, and we have that at home, and that's awesome. Yeah. So that's one of the things I'm going to do down the road. We're going to go fishing, and then when we get back to the dock, I'm going to cook it for you guys and show you how I cook. This is uh, Reggie. Galeato and uh, he says, hey Alan, I know it's pretty straightforward, but how, how do you explain dead stick? But I, he's never done dead sticking before. All right. Dead sticking is just a simple term fishing that uh, even you could do it because you let your line out and you put your rod down you don't do nothing. That's dead sticking. You're probably one of the best dead stickers I've ever fished. <laughs> well, yeah, that's why you, when you're out, out there fishing, yeah. And, and you, you put the rod down, you pick up a sandwich, you take a bite, and you get a fish, right? You can't eat your stupid sandwich. It's called dead sticking. Okay. Well, now it's we know a very effective way of catching fish, you know, not doing nothing. Okay. You're, that's one of your best fishing apps. You're yeah. really good. Okay. And, and Tommy Lee wrote in, wanted to know the difference between the different uh, actions of rod. Fishing pole is just like a tool, so mm -hmm. they make different actions, they make, they make different um, materials, they make fiberglass, they make graphite, they make high grade graphite. You see rods anywhere from $39 to $600, $800 for a rod and there's a reason. So it's in the material. The actions are pretty simple. A lot of them are mostly nowadays everybody makes them fast mm -hmm. so they actually don't bend on the bottom and they only bend on the top. And then they have moderate, they have different ones. All your rod manufacturers use a numbering system so the first two numbers on a rod indicate the length, usually in inches, and then the third one, the power, one being the lightest and six being the heaviest. So that's like number two pencil has graphite in it, right? Yep. And it's stiff. So. Yeah. Ron Navarani says, when you're mooching for king salmon and berryessa, what size jig head do you use? Okay, very important. Um, I would say to use, make sure you use a, the correct one, which is a dart head. And basically I use a quarter ounce from 10 feet down to 30. And then when I go deeper, I use, use three quarter ounce. You didn't tell me that the last time. I kept not getting fish. I don't you tell did. you a lot of stuff. <laughs> nice guy. What do you say? And Steve Mitchell said, Alan, how far above salmon do you present your bait? So salmon, when they're feeding, they go after the shad that are bait ball, and they always eat going up. So usually I like to keep it around two to three feet above the bait balls that I'm grafting. That's why I, every time I always stipulate how important having good electronics are. I wouldn't fish without them. So Alan Steve Vargas asked about finding the thermocline in the lake, or how, how do you find that when you're in lake fishing? 
usually looking for thermic lines, I use my uh, electronics. So your graph is very important, but you have to have one that probably has a faster process in it, so it would be your upper line stuff. So something there, you're getting about 3,000 watts of power. And basically, I would say in and around our California lakes, thermocline in the summertime is always around 60 to 80 feet for real thumb. But you can see on fish finder. So on your fish finder, you'll see like a little haze. Most likely, it'll be about an inch wide on your screen. It'll be like fuzz going through the, about an inch across your screen. That would be your thermocline. Summertime, once you get down past the thermocline, they're very low oxygen. So most of the time, the fish like to hang around it or right above. So the salmon show that I'm doing, when I wait for the lake to turn over, that thermocline comes all the way to the surface. So the temperature is all the way the same. So the fish move up. So Alan, Steve Vargas also asked about fish finders and, and using sight imaging and down imaging and finding crappie. Can you explain the, that different type of technology? Well, the new ones, new fish finders, most of them nowadays when you buy them, they come with three in one, which is 2D sonar, down imaging, and sight imaging. I would say one of the easiest ways to explain it is your regular 2D sonar, if I was at 10 feet of water, looks at around 4 feet. Down imaging looks 19, side imaging will give you 70 feet around the boat. So this gives you more area to look around. Very effective tool as you watch my crappie show. And G. Leon uh, asked about fishing for sand dabs. I've, I've never fished for sand dabs, how do you do that? Yeah. Very carefully. <laughs> I've caught a lot of them. I've done a lot of sand dab fishing. Go out in the ocean where we were crabbing is a good spot. I go in anywhere from two to three hundred feet of water. You use sabiki rigs, you know, something with multiple hooks. Put a little piece of squid on there, drop it down, drag it on the bottom, you feel a little tuck, you just yank it up and you'll bring like three to ten of them up at once, depending on how many hooks you have. And they use them for a cut bait, but I like to eat them too when I get big. Robert Mays asked about the knives. Dexter, do they make a smaller knife because he doesn't catch big crappie like you do? Dexter makes small ones and they make large ones. But I like to use the longer blade, as you saw in my video. I just use the very tip of it, but I like the longer one because it's flexible. But they do make shorter blades. So on this video, I'm going to drop a link in there so you could actually just click on it and see the knife down. We have uh, Clean Tech 409. Exactly what rod do you use for crappie? What length? Uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12 feet? What? And if I were to pick one rod, I would pick a 7 foot. And I would use an ultralight, something very light in action with a parabolic open. Okay, and then what type of line? And I use 4 pound tips, well, no matter how big the crappie are. I mean, if you, you get a bigger crappie, you just break your line? I don't have a problem. You saw me bringing that 20 pound carp on 4 pound tips. <laughs> Watch okay. that video because it, it was a tug of war, but I got it in. Yeah, four pound test on a yep. little carp. Yep. So was he good to eat? I don't know, that's Denise. <laughs> <laughs> on this video, I'm going to put all of the links and all the stuff that I use for crop Tom Hahn wanted to know about fish finders. How do you know the type of bottom, if it's sandy or hard? Or... So on the New fish finders, everybody has color ones because they don't make black and white no more. And they all use the same definition of the hardness and soft bottom. So if you look on your body or meter and you have it set right, if you see yellow haze, the brighter and the thicker it is, the harder the bottom is. Very easy. Okay, what does red indicate? Red is the softer, muddy bottom. Okay, so that's a sandy bottom then? Uh, if it's kind of reddish and has a little yellow tinge to it, I would say it's sandy. And if it's all bright yellow, then it's bronze. So now we know what Alan would do. But, you know, stuff like that, I'm going to be doing a lot of 2D. I'm going to talk a lot about sonar in the future. And I'm going to make a lot of videos showing you guys how to work here. Get rid of it. Yeah, you know, it I, works. I, I wash my hands. I wash my hands, 
and it still stinks like fish. Yep. So what'd you say to do? I said go in your bathroom, squeeze some toothpaste in your hand and rub it because it's scented and it's abrasive and it takes all the stink away. And it worked. And I have no cavities. That's right. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you next week. <laughs> We have fun whether we like it or not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>